Hello everyone, it's guest designer Mark here. Today I'm going to show you how to make these really cool and trendy beaded macrame channel set bracelets. Now depending on the length we can have singles, so that's once around the wrist, and these amazing colours. We can have doubles, double around the wrist, and we can even have triple. So this will go three times around the wrist, depending on the wrist size, okay? So these are really easy to make. They use the basic materials. You can use gemstones, you can use seed beads. Um, the two items that you will need are your paracord, which we'll talk about in a moment, and also some eslon nylon cord, okay? So I'll show you the fundamental equipment that we're going to need. I'll just bring across my board. So in front of you here, you have everything you need to make these bracelets. So obviously we need a macrame ball, so you can use a small or the large. Uh, a selection of paracord. For the demonstration, I'm going to be using black. I've got a green and a grey here. Sharp pair of scissors, a cigarette lighter or a naked flame, just for finishing off your pieces. As I've mentioned, a selection of nylon cord. Now either the 0.4 millimetre or the 0.3 Okay, just to get just to make a nice feature of the, of the cord. And the last thing you're going to need are these. These are T-pins, which we have them regularly featuring on the show because we need these to hold on to our cord while we're doing our basic macrame. And I think that's it. So I think we are ready to go. So I'll just pop all this equipment to one side and we'll make a start. So this is your small macrame board. And as you can see, we have slots along the top, the sides, and also along the bottom to hold your cords. And then we have measurements along the top and down the sides, and these are in inches. So the large squares are an inch, and the smaller squares inside are half an inch. Okay, so we're going to need our macrame board. So the next thing we need to decide is the length of our bracelet. So as I said, I've gone for a piece of black paracord. Now this is the paracord 451. So inside the uh, the nylon outer coating we will have seven thinner cords. So this is probably the one of the strongest cords that jewellery maker have in its stock. So we need a piece of paracord. Now what you need to do first of all is you need to take decide on whether you're doing a single, a double or a triple length and you need to double the width. So in effect if I'm doing a single bracelet I would probably need a, between 14 and 16 inches because you have paracord going down either side not just a single. You will need to also add probably about an inch inch and a half to make your loop that's going to take your knot at the end. So I would probably go for if I was having a say seven inch bracelet I would go for 16 inch of cord and then obviously if you're going to do a double you would double that and triple you would triple that. So I would basically take a piece of paracord wrap it around the wrist singly double it and then, as I said leave a couple of inches at the end for your loop and your knot at the end okay so I'm going to flip the muck around my board over so it just doesn't confuse everyone with the measurements and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of paracord and as I said I've got a smaller piece here for demonstration purposes I'm going to find the two ends and then I'm going to find the loop at the end okay and I'm going to take my first t-pin and I'm going to place it just inside the loop so it holds it nicely in position and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two cords and I'm going to go down to the bottom of the board and I'm going to secure my cord in the two slots at the bottom so if you have a, a, para, a macrame board that's getting a bit old and a bit overused, then I would definitely keep it for your, your paracord pieces because obviously you have larger cords going in the slots at the top and bottom of your board. So that's now held in position. For contrast, I'm going to go for a red nylon cord and I'll probably take about six foot length of this. But today for demonstration, I'll just take a, a couple of feet. And as I said, this is the 0.4 or the 0.3. Um, it all depends on the size of the drill hole in your gemstone or bead that you're using because you will need to feed both ends through each of your beads. Okay, so just bear that in mind before you start your project. Take your bead of choice, just decide whether the two cords will go through in opposite directions. If they will, you can use the 0.4. If it's a bit tight or they won't go in, you'll then have to go down to a 0.3 or choose a gemstone or a bead with a larger hole. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the central point of our nylon cord and we're going to feed it under both of our paracord cords. And we're going to, as I said, we're going to find the middle. Just feed that down. And we're going to be doing basic square knot macrame. Okay, so we'll, 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 we'll pretend that no one has done macrame. I'll just give you a quick little taster session. So these are our lazy strands, and they're called lazy because, as the name suggests, they don't do anything. They're holding there in position all the, all the cords and the beads. And these are your working threads, and these will do the actual knotting. So the first thing we're going to do, I always start on the left-hand side, but it doesn't really matter if you, if you start on the right. I'm going to take my left cord, and this is where the slots in the macrame board are really useful. I'm going to take my left cord, and I'm going to feed it over the two cords to the right. So we have a letter D in effect. Then I'm going to pick up my other cord. I'm going to drape it over the top of that horizontal. And then I'm going to take that cord, and I'm going to feed it underneath where all of those cords cross. I'm going, I'm going to pull the cord, and then this will make your first initial knot. And as I said earlier at the beginning in the introduction, you need to leave a loop of about an inch. You need to be able to get your, your index finger in, in the hole. So we're going to do the right hand side of the knot. So I'm going to do in opposite this time. So I'm going to take my cord and place it over the top. So it's a letter B. So we have a D on the left and a B on the right. I'm going to take my left cord I'm going to drape it over the horizontal and then I'm going to feed it underneath all of those cords diagonally to the opposite corner. And then I'm going to pull and that is your full square knot. So a left and a right is a full square knot. So I'm going to do the left again. So left and then right. And as I said, this is, this is your basic square knot macrame, which we featured quite a lot on the show and it's probably one of my favourite techniques because it's, it's good for gents jewellery as well as, as for ladies so it's quite a universal technique. So I'm just going to do a couple more knots. Ideally you want to do five full square knots so that's left right ten times so that's four I'll do one more and then I'll show you how we incorporate the channel setting of the beads. And we'll do the right hand side. Perfect. So that is now nice and secure. It's holding the loop in position and we're ready to incorporate our beads. So the beads that I've decided to go for are these amazing eight millimeter faceted black onyx. Now, I would either go for six millimeter or eight millimeter. You can get away with 10 millimeter, but they are quite big. I always feel that eight millimeter is a really nice, perfect size for channel setting. So I'll just put those to one side. So we just need to prepare our cord position before we add our beads. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our left cord into the center of our two paracords, under and out to the left. And then we're just going to ease it up to the top. I'm going to take our right cord into the centre of the two paracords, underneath and out to the right. So whichever side your cord is on, we do the same side. So into the centre, under and out. Okay, so now our cords were on the inside and they're now on the outside. Okay, so if you open those cords, you can actually see the channel starting to form. So we can start adding our beads. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our left thread and we're going to pop it on our bead. So we're just going to pop that on. And then keeping the bead in your left hand, we're going to take our opposite cord and we're going to thread it through in the opposite direction. So the first cord was going from left to right. Now we're going to go right to left. And as you can see, there's plenty of space in this black onyx and I'm going to pull the two threads in opposite directions. And what you will see then is the bead will sit on top of the paracord. Can you see if I just tilt it sideways? You can just see it popping on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do that little maneuver with our cords again. So we're going to take the left into the center, under and out. And then we're going to take our right cord 
into the centre, under and out to the right. And then when we pull, what will happen is, plop, it will sit nice and neatly inside the channel. The cords are in the right position for our next bead. So I'm just going to reach across, take one of our 8mm black onyx, I'm going to take the cord through one side of the hole, and then I'm going to take the second cord through in the opposite direction. Feed that through. And again, because we've already opened up that channel, there's a bit more space for it to sit. So again, it sits on the top of the channel. We take the left cord into the centre, under and out. Right cord into the centre, under and out to the right. Again, pull nice and tight. And I think the red against the black makes a really nice, a nice look. Again, we'll do a couple more. So we take the left cord, pop on our bead through the left side of the hole. Then we take our opposite cord and we feed it through in the opposite direction. Let's feed that through. and tight. And this is a really nice little technique because it is really simple to get kids involved with as well. So inside and out, inside and uh, and out, and pull it nice and tight. And you can see they're all sitting nice and neatly inside that little channel. Right, we'll do two more and then I'll show you how we finish. So obviously you would continue with this until you got to the length of your single, double or triple wraparound bracelet. So I'm going to feed that through in the opposite direction. As I said at the beginning in the introduction, if you just make sure that you can get two thicknesses of your nylon cord through your drill hole before you start, because the last thing you want to do is get, your, get all excited about your up and coming project and then get everything sorted and then you can't get your cords through your beads, there's nothing worse. So I'll just do one more. So as I said, you would just continue with this right to the very end of your cord, but bear in mind you need to leave a couple of inches at the end to tie your finishing off knot. Just going to slide that through. And then we're going to bring it down to the bottom. And we're going again, going from the inside and out, inside and out and you pull nice and tight. And again, so not only do you get the beads down the channel in the centre, but you, if you go for a contrasting colour, it makes a really nice outside edge feature as well. So the next thing we have to do is we have to replicate our square knots that we did at the top of our piece of work. So again, it's basic square knot macrame. So start with the left side, and then what, as you can see, it just pulls everything nice and neat to a nice, neat finish. It looks like peas in a pod. Then we do the right hand side, and you'll, know, you'll notice that it will, it will tighten up quite considerably when we do our second, there we go, half of the knot. So as soon as you do that second part of the knot, it will all like, sit nice and neat and tight. We're going to do the other side, so one, two, three, four. Last little knot, ten, like so. So we've now got our completed ten knots. So now we can take it off of our macrame board. Just put those bits to one side. And then what we're going to do is we need to first of all dispose of our nylon cords. So the way that I do this is I take my scissors and I just cut, leaving a tiny little tuft. Cut us a couple of millimetres, flip it over and do the same little tuft. 
And then I use a, a cigarette lighter. You can use a candle or a naked flame. And what we're going to do is we're just going to melt and squidge the ends of our eslon. And because the nylon cord is a man-made fibre, it melts really well and it will just give a nice neat finish. As you can see there, that's nice and welded together if you like, nice and neatly finished. And then all we do to finish is we just take our remaining length of cords and we tie a simple overhand knot. And I like to leave a little gap of a maybe half a half centimetre to a centimetre and then we pull that nice and tight, like so, so we get a nice, nice little finishing knot. And then I cut the two ends off, again leaving a little tuft. And then again with your cigarette lighter or your naked flame, you then go in and you just melt and squidge the ends so they sit nice and neatly. And then if you wanted to, you could, using a black marker pen, you could go in and just colour in the ends of your paracord there just so it uh, it looks a bit neater at the end and now obviously that's when you've finished your completed that will then go through the loop so if I just bring the completed pieces over again so this is a single using Labradorite so you can see we've got our macrame section at the beginning and then we have our channel set so as I said earlier it's, it's fantastic for gents jewellery and then if we go for a double and in this double I've gone for a camouflage colour we are using wooden beads as again just make sure that you have really good substantial size drill holes and then these are two of my favorites this one here I've taken a strand of rutal quartz and I've color graded it from dark all the way through to the very end when it's light so you can have a bit of fun with your gemstone strands as well and then this one is using this is a triple and this one is using hematite faceted rounds and again in an 8 mil size so there we have our little loop we have our knot at the end place it around the, the wrist pop it through the loop and then you can do your, your two or three little wraps so that's your channel set paracord bracelet using gemstones I hope you enjoyed that and um, I look forward to seeing your pieces of work soon